Welcome back, everybody. I'm Sean LaFlock. I'm here with Scotty Hagness. This is the Fitness, Wellness, and Longevity Podcast. Scott, how goes it? Good. Other than I'm just kind of freezing here. but uh... You look a little <laughs> cold, but we're about to get into a heated discussion right now, Scott. We're going to yeah, we'll warm it up. I don't care what the weather is there, even though it's 75 degrees here and beautiful. Anyway, so I've been a gym owner now for personally for about a year and a half, coming up on two years but I've been a coach and programmer for, for a gym for probably like four or five years now. One of the things that comes to, you know, comes up, you know, periodically is the idea of people being unhappy with the programming. And, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you first, how you receive it. Usually, uh, like what do people do to let you know that they're not liking the program? Yeah. Well, let's see. Um, having done this for nearly 15 years, um, obviously I have had some complaints at times in the past, uh, but it hasn't honestly been really that, that much. Um, I think over that time we always changed very subtly and were someone to, you know, jump in a time machine and skip forward a number of years. Yeah. It might look really different. But on a day-to-day, week-to-week, even month-to-month basis, not that much different. Um, but th- there was always some push, you know, as things looked a little less crossfitty or um, things were re- were repeated. And you know, honestly, the, the people that either went somewhere else where they thought they were getting what they wanted or what they thought they needed, or they kind of changed their outlook, stuck around, and stuck with it. That's pretty much pretty much the deal. I would say the biggest time it was an issue was probably 2009, mm-hmm. 10, somewhere in that range is I think when we had the, probably the biggest issue with it. And frankly, we were still pretty CrossFit at that time. Um, but we were implementing some of the more structured strength protocols and some influence from the early uh, OPEX courses, you know, then the... Uh, um, uh, you know, where things were a little more structured or percentages of effort, not, you know, everything for time or all out all the time. So first off, a follow-up question to that is, were there a particular type of athlete or pepper that would request these types of changes or want to know more about this stuff? I mean, I, I there's, there's, there's some people who want to, to educate themselves and I, I love those people because they're like, listen, I want to know the purpose of why we're doing things and I'm all for that. But then there are just certain yeah, absolutely. who just want to complain. I look forward to those questions, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, I even remember, you know, the particular instances that I'm thinking of from the era I just mentioned. Um, I don't think anything we would have had on the board would have actually satisfied the, these people and the mentality that they had. You know, it was a small, at, at the time, I would say there were maybe some clicks in the gym. You know, and it was this one click that was led by a particularly um, not very uh, an individual with not a very good mental outlook on things. Yep. Always look for fault in everything. Mm-hmm. And as we've seen, you know, these people joined other gyms eventually left and, and went through I don't even know how many gyms so clearly they weren't able to find satisfaction with any of the other gyms and their program sometimes just identifying that certain people here maybe aren't, aren't going to be able to please I never really doesn't really bother me obviously I don't want to lose clients or members but if they don't really resonate with you know your uh, mission and purpose then you know, it's probably not a good fit and probably not a good thing for anybody. Yeah. Now at the time, Scott, did you feel like, because obviously if someone brings something up there, there might be some truth to what they're saying. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do you balance that out with your own truth? Yeah. Well, um, I do think you have to listen to see or try to find out what, what is, what, you know, is this person, really their complaint right i mean uh, is it they will think that more all-out stuff is going to give them better 
faster weight loss. Is that is that the direction this person's coming from? Um, and and maybe it's simply if you can identify that it's not just that they'd like to see more thrusters or something. You know, um, you can meet them halfway and see what they're saying. But then there's there could be other issues. Like, so one thing we did, uh, and maybe this mitigated some of those things. We did it several times. Was where we did a a gym wide survey. We had a client that did stuff like this and he volunteered to, you know, write up a survey that would kind of ask the hard questions and things. And we got a lot of feedback and there were some things on there where you clearly when a large swath of people say, you know, have a particular feel a certain way or that's their perception, then it's real, right? And whether you like what you hear or not, you have to address it. But I think it was a really good thing because we we did change some things, some things we really weren't aware of. Um, and it certainly uh, steered steered the ship in a better direction. And I think people appreciated, you know, that uh, we listened to them. Now, um, are there any, like, kind of hard points you get to or lines in the sand for you, Scott? Or is it more of just, like, an education kind of thing? Because um, I, I feel that us in particular, we're very much a minority in the, in the CrossFit world where we have a greater understanding of what actually gets people the results that they want. It's not six week flash in the pan crush fests necessarily. I mean, it might get you some short term results, but I think when we talk about long term progress, if a person has, you know, that, that 40, 50 pounds to lose, it's, it's, it's probably a lot better off to make smart lifestyle changes and uh, proper adjustments to their exercise and nutrition in order for them to actually acclimate and change themselves so that that weight comes off rather than saying, okay, the weight is the problem. So let's go after the weight, right? How do you, how do you address right. with, with some of your athletes? I think having written about it, talked about it, it's, you know, kind of front and center on our website, that that's, that's our approach. We try to weed out people that think that, you know, they can just get their ass handed to them for six weeks and make a big change. And it's exactly what you said, right? If once in a great while for a very small minority of people who have only small changes to make, you can use that approach and it might work. Generally, someone younger and already pretty lean, right? Because it's a strategy to get you in shape, like for a season or for a, you know, a bodybuilding show. If you have a lot of weight to lose, it's a completely different approach because you're never going to lose 40 or 50 pounds in six weeks. And any sudden really high stress thing you do is going to send you the opposite direction. Most likely. Yeah. You might drop, you know, X amount in rather quickly, but it's going to take you the other direction. And on the long term, either you're going to not be able to sustain it and you're going to go back to your old habits and have a big rebound, um, or you're going to stall out because your body's, you know, refusing to give it up under the chronic stress of, you know, being overextended and underfed. So I think just education. I mean, we get, occasionally do get people in and we kind of, it's usually a discussion we have before they even really necessarily would decide to join. Um, and I think the people we've got around, you know, it's, they're well acclimated to that idea if they've been here a long time. So it's not a, not something that comes up too often, I, I feel. Mm -hmm. Especially now that you've kind of, you know who you are and you know who you're not. So when someone comes in the, through the door, you're, you're willing to ask the tough questions right away and be willing to say no at this point. Yeah, it, exactly. You kind of eventually kind of see who and who isn't going to be a good fit or what for their goals. And, and um, you know, I, I definitely ask the question to make sure that people are aware of how we how we do things there. So I think that you know you you make up some great points, but you know taking it one step further in terms of education for people, it's so much easier to just lose weight and think that that's your problem, mm -hmm. or that uh, your your life isn't you don't have fun in your or like your your life isn't stimulating. So you come into the gym and you have to have that drag out, knock out, fight of a workout multiple times a week and you kind of lose touch with the training. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's easy just to, to put that label on it, but it's harder to look at yourself. It's so easy for, for us to be the scapegoat for people in some ways, you know, mm -hmm. it's like a rational person doesn't come in and attack another person. Right. right. They're, they're like, Hey, I'd like to discuss some with you. Do you have some time? I'd love to sit down and, and you know, whatever. There's no like ego attached to it. If they really like, you know, if, if I were to sit down with you as my coach, what you were and I'm like, Hey, we need to work on some things. Um, and this is what I think, like, what do you think? Like I come to you with a problem and a solution and you come mm -hmm. to me with a rebuttal and we, maybe we meet in a common ground. And I, I think that's most of the time what, what can happen. But I think it's, it's very interesting how people tend to handle things, myself included. I, I'll, I'll get emotional about things and, or I'll hold, hold some kind of resentment because I haven't actually uh, been in my authentic self and said my truth because I'm more afraid of this person leaving me or uh, this person disagreeing with me or not liking me because of my view. So, I mean, I understand the compl complexity of it, but I think we all got to kind of take a step back and see what is my role here. With this profession, you know, we do open ourselves up to, you know, be potentially a scapegoat for something, right? You can have somebody that um, doesn't get the results they're looking for. And then, of course, there are a certain segment of people. It doesn't matter what those results are. They're not ever going to be happy with them, right? You know, somebody can never be too lean or, you know, there's always someone they see on Instagram that's stronger than them or whatever, right? And um, if they can't accept um where they may have had shortcomings or, you know, they, it's easy to project those on someone else. And as a coach, you can be our gym owner in particular. Um, you can be an easy target for that. Yeah, absolutely. And especially if you set yourself up for that as well, like my, myself, you know, personally, like I'm a person who, who is kind of a, a, a haven for people to complain because I, I, you know, I'm relatively compassionate to people and I, understand and 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 I, I allow people to kind of vent and i'm like you know very agreeable but you know uh that's not necessarily my job my job isn't necessarily to be your friend all the time my job is to give you the truth and a lot of the time i'm, I'm not comfortable but you know more recently i'm getting more and more comfortable but i also got to be able to give the truth without having that resentment toward it because i think the, the thing that i hold on to personally is you pay me to write you workouts, make sure that you're safe, put you in the best position possible, and then you come to me saying, this isn't what I want, right? So there has to be some kind mm -hmm. of trust that my knowledge, my efforts, my livelihood, what I do every single day, what I eat, sleep, and breathe is to put you in the best position possible. And I take, I guess I take it personally when people are like, well, this is what I think we should be doing. I'm like, do you go into your financial analyst office who's had 40, you know, whatever years of experience of doing this stuff and you say, well, I think this is what I should do with my money. What would they tell you to do? Good. It's your money. Take it wherever you want. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but balancing that out with, hey, I don't have all the answers. And maybe this person bringing their perspective to things could possibly make me get closer to the answers that I have. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely a challenging thing. But I, I you know. Everybody sees the coach as this strong, you know, has all the answers. You can say anything to them, but we're fucking human just like everybody else, you know, and I don't, I, don't, I wouldn't come up to anybody else in another profession and, and put that on them. I would ask questions and I would inquire with, with a, with a very lightness to it. Like, Hey, I want to know what's going on. Like, I really am interested in this. I'm interested in my health. I'm interested in my wellness, but for people to say like, this is what I think we should be doing. It's like, great. Like you've already kind of set yourself aside as a person who is complaining first and then answers later rather than someone who's seeking answers. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know what the, you know, the, the exact answer is there, but somewhere, somewhere, somewhere there's, <laughs> as you, yeah, what's that? Yeah, somewhere in the middle as it usually is. Exactly. I guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, was it a case of maybe their goals changed somewhat, or the, yeah. or you know, it started out being this one thing, but that was the facade for what they really wanted, and then 
when the training looks like this other thing and not the thing they really wanted. And finally they, uh, you know, complained. Or... You know, I guess at the end of the day, it's like, if this person wants to do what they want to do and that's fine and, and, and you, you can just let go of it. But I, you know, as a coach and as a person who's, who's here to help people, and I think you would agree to this, it's like, you can't at least not say your part. Right. And I think that's where I, I let, I, I let myself, I let the a view of other people and kind of the idea of being a welcome mat to people, um, like walk on me or walk all over me, um, tends to, cause a lot of anger and resentment for me because mm. I can say my part after they have been questions and like, this is, this is what I think, this is what I believe. And if you don't align with that, that's okay. But if I don't say my part, then I'm always going to be like, I should have said something or, you know, I'm not actually being my authentic self. Like I just, I deserve a voice, especially mm -hmm. because you're coming for, for my voice, not to just use me. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. I guess, you know, there is that balance to it, whether it's on a, a coach who owns a gym or a personal training or whatever it might be. Like, I mean, even my, even my kids, I coach for lacrosse. I mean, it's much easier and much more comfortable for me there just because it's kids. And they're like, listen, you're going to listen to what I say or get the hell out. But when you're, when you're now in a service industry and you're indoctrinated with the idea, the customer is always right. That I think that slogan tends to, um, not jibe with my truth. Mm -hmm, right. Well, and I think we're, you know, it depends on exactly what the, you know, the, the issue is. Um, you know, we want to take care of our customers, but at this, at, we're not, or we certainly shouldn't. Like if somebody comes in and wants to do, you know, I'm writing workouts for somebody and they want to do some ridiculous thing I know is going to crush them. Well, I'm not going to just write that workout for, you know, that they're not right in that case, in my opinion, they can go somewhere else, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, that's not something I'm going to do. Lots of other things, you know, sure. I'll take care of them if it's something that still fits in the value system. Um, yeah. So I, I thought I'd bring that up. You know, it's something that as, as gym owners and as coaches and stuff, it, you know, it comes up, but I, I just had some, a few incidences recently that, that happens with, but I guess, you know, realistically, you got to be able to say no, and you're not going to be able to please everybody. And you, I guess what we can do is just know who we are and know what we want, mm -hmm. you know, and know what we can yeah. get with and, and sleep, sleep, uh, you know, with a clean conscience about, right? Exactly. Yeah. I think having that grounded principle and certainly with time and experience, we find who and what we are, you know, more, uh, comes into much clearer focus yeah i mean i certainly remember when i started i mean any live body at the door you know i'll try and take care of them whatever they need you know <laughs> right and then at some point you know, so there's yeah. a there's I enough mean, there's enough folks out there that resonate with what we're trying to do that um, yep we can and i guess you know uh, uh, having the courage to just be like you know this is what i think and this is you know, what do you, what am I here for? Are you, am I here for you to tell me what you want? Then why aren't you just doing this on your own? Why do you need me? You know, mm -hmm. um, because I think there's other reasons why people are there. People are there for community. People are there for, um, you know, obviously a gym because it's convenient for them. They're, it's different. They can do things there that they can't do other places. But, you know, uh, and, and again, like, I don't feel that like what's going on now for me is bad or good. I'm like, it is what it is. And like, it's probably natural to react this way, you know, when things like this happen, but I have to have a deeper knowing that uh, who I am and what I'm, what I will always be is more important than, you know, this person not thinking that they, you know, that I'm, or, or me being on uh, fit for uh, the job, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So, right. now that being said, I think it's time to switch gears. We have the Dubai Fitness Championship coming up this weekend. I know probably not on everybody's radar, but uh, this is the start of the CrossFit season here, Scott. Um, yeah, crazy, huh? I know. That's uh, we. Feel, I feel like I was just in Madison, but the Dubai Fitness Championship is going to be going on this weekend. Um, you have. Uh, Matt Fraser, who's competing, um, you know, a lot of other 
you know, top tier athletes uh, are competing. Uh, Travis Mayer will be competing as well. Uh, and they've already released a few of these workouts, but uh, they look they look CrossFit Games esque, Scott. Um, just to give you an mm-hmm. idea of um, one of the workouts that they're going to be doing is an open water swim. But prior to doing the open water swim, they're going to be doing like a twenty one fifteen nine double kettlebell like snatches with front squats into a swim. So kind of CrossFit esque, <laughs> like CrossFit Games esque. Yeah, yeah. However, with a, um, you know, using the, the, the uh, types of, um, you know, mo- like uh, the, the terrain, so to speak, to their advantage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, this will be warm water, I'm assuming. Yeah, I think it will be. <laughs> <laughs> That'll definitely change some things up. And I know Matt Fraser was there for like three weeks, I want to say, training there, getting acclimated. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it is, it starts on Wednesday. So it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it's, it's five days. Um, another workout that they have is a, uh, they've done this before, but a 4k run with the best and another 4k run without the best in the desert. Um, Is it it like 8k continuous? You just kick off the vest and keep going. (laughs) Just unreal. Uh, they have a max snatch. Um, just running through the workouts here is workout number four. Workout number seven is nine rope climbs, 40 foot hands, 40 meter handstand walk, six rope climbs, 40 meter. So we're looking at some pretty standard here. Yeah. Uh, another nice little sprint ish workout is 15 snatches, 15 clean and jerks. The snatches are with 90 kilograms and 110 kilograms for the gentleman. It's 60 and 80 for the ladies. So. Um, you know, some very, very crossfit type stuff. They're not really looking like they're emphasizing non-traditional CrossFit type things, but you mm-hmm. never know. Things might, might change as I think, I don't know if all the workouts are announced, but I know a few are, but yeah, from what we see so far, it really does look like, uh, this is a, a classic CrossFit type, um, uh, event. Hmm. Yeah. Is there, um. Live, live streaming? Yes, there or, will be. Well, it would probably live probably stream. want to watch it on delay, I'd imagine. Cause probably I know, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm their Instagram right now and uh, live in Dubai or streamed anywhere around the world. Uh, they have like all the stuff at a local time. They'll be streaming stuff from like 8 to 1 their time. So uh, time in Dubai right now and on the East Coast of the United States is 11 41 p.m so if they're going at 8 a.m it's right now local time for me it's 2 41 so what is that uh it's 2 41 to 11 was that eight hours 11. nine hours nine hours ahead is uh, what they are yeah no oh, a little less than i thought well okay because i'm but i'm thinking of my time so that yeah so be, six uh, hours ahead for you <laughs> so throw would you know i figured it would be more wouldn't it so it's going to go off at 2 a.m your time so yeah. about 5 a.m my time <laughs> well, I won't watch it live. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. But yeah, there's what it is. I think it's going to be cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I might tune yeah. in. We'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll update you next week if I tune, actually tune in. That'll be the tell. That'll be the test if this thing is actually going to survive. Because the average yeah. person who should have a interest in this, if if I'm not watching this, it's never going to survive. This has right, got to be yeah. all over social media. It's got to be all over everywhere for people to be interested in this. Yeah, and then th- for the kickoff one, you'd want to see us some good result, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, at least I would always watch regionals. Uh, yeah. You know, the different regionals, but if if you know, if people aren't going to watch this, but I, yeah, I think I'll try and check it out a little bit. Um, have that stuff playing, you know, while I work a little bit. So yeah, playing in the background or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, interesting. I was I was uh, thinking the other day, just driving, I don't know, wondering uh, if the uh, if the open will end up really being de-emphasized by a lot of the cr- top top athletes. I mean, why why hit that for five weeks yep. when it, when you're you know highly unless you live in some little country, mm-hmm. uh, you're highly unlikely to qualify that way. Yeah, it almost might, becomes something for outliers or people who, yeah, like you said, aren't really um, on the main stage yet. You know what I mean? Because yeah. 
you know, just to get to a um, to buy fitness challenge, you'd have to go through a qualifier. You wouldn't get an invite if you had you if you were new to the sport. So it kind of gives you an opportunity for for you know new athletes to start getting their name out there, which I think is a pretty cool cool thing. Yeah. Yeah, you'd be better off putting your uh, efforts into the qualifiers for these other contests and trying to mm-hmm. get in that way than waste your time with the open. Yep. So yep. I'll be curious, yeah, if it, that just becomes yeah, really de-emphasized. Yeah. Hmm. That's pretty cool. So time uh, will tell. Updates for next week, obviously, for our next podcast. We'll kind of go through the winners, the, the biggest winners, the biggest yeah. winners of the week. But, um, you know, uh, there, it seems like there's going to be pretty much all the heavy hitters out there, you know, Matt Fraser's and the likes. So mm-hmm. uh, we'll kind of discuss a little bit next week maybe. What do you think, Scotty? Yeah, no, that sounds good. Awesome. Well, before we go, I have to do my little disclaimer here, my little advertisement. Guys, this is the Fitness, Wellness, and Longevity podcast. Please review it. Subscribe. Um, re- only five-star reviews, please. We don't need any four-star reviews. Um, and share it. Uh, we're trying to get this podcast to grow, so if you can share it on your social media or with your friends or your family members or your teachers, whoever it might be, uh, please share it because it helps grow the podcast, and we want to be able to get our voices out there and hear some great information and share this great information to a lot of people. Scott, you got anything else for today? I'm going to get warm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Sean LaFlock. You can get me at Sean at CrossFitDelaryBeach.com. I'm Scott Hagnes. You can get me at Scott at CrossFitPortland.com. Stay warm, Scott. I'll talk to you next week. All right. Take care. Stay cool.